Hey, David Rauschendorfer here, your cybersecurity resource. And I was just going over this subject with a client and I wanted to take a minute to just create a video for you uh, to make sure that you have an understanding of data ownership in the sense of working with uh, SaaS platforms, right? So in this scenario that we're discussing, uh, an organization has a SaaS platform, which is a software as a service. They have an application. In this instance, it's hosted in the cloud in an AWS environment. And clients pay a subscription fee to use this service where they log in, uh, you know, go through, use the application for what it's used for, uh, put their data in there, and then uh, go along with their business, right? They add that as a part of their operational workflows into their business. So basically, we're starting with uh, the application in the, in the cloud, right? Just AP uh, up here in the cloud. And now we have the uh, management organization, right? which is basically like the vendor. And so they're down here, they're the vendor, they own the application. They own this environment, right? I mean, it's a cloud environment, they're paying for this environment up here. And then you have your client over here, right? And now they're paying that subscription fee to the vendor and they're using this application in the cloud as part of their operational workflows to conduct their daily business. So all of that's fine. The point that we're discussing today is as data goes into this environment uh, here in the cloud, who owns that data, right? And the first thing that always comes up is, well, what type of data is it? Is it just public data that's readily available? You know, is it some type of protected data that, you know, there's regula regulations around how that needs to be stored or maintained? or who has access to it, things of those nature. So in this scenario, we're gonna take the stance that this is protected data, right? So the client is inputting some type of protected data into this application that is hosted into the cloud. So in thinking through that, where would you think the data ownership lies? Does the client who's inputting that data own the data or is there at some point the vendor takes ownership of that data, right? Now, they may have always some level of access to that data because they're the ones ma managing and maintaining this environment. But in reality, that's really the client's data there. They're entrusted with that data. They're putting it into a vendor application, right? That's why they, the client should be doing some level of security due diligence on that vendor and they're maintaining ownership of that data throughout its life cycle. Now at the end of the contract, if they choose to no longer use that application and use that vendor, the, it's the client's responsibility that in the beginning they ensure that they have a way to export that data in some sort of readable format uh, so that they can use it, either putting it into another uh, competitor solution or just having it available for record sets uh, going forward, especially if regulations require them to maintain that data for any set period of time. So the thing is, is that the vendor always wants to be able to use that data in some sort of format, right? Especially with the application, it could just be for bug fixing, error fixing, um, getting some type of performance data out of the application. They want to use some level of that client data um, to be able to continue to enhance their vendor business as well. So in order to do that, something needs to be established there, some type of relationship. Now it's always keen to get you know, your legal counsel involved, make sure you use the right legal terms for the states and territories that you're working in. Uh, but definitely, you know, something commonly seen is just a terms of use agreement, right? So the vendor is going to establish some level of terms of use, but or if you are using this solution, you are agreeing to these terms. So that's basically going to say that, you know, at, at a minimum, the vendor is going to be maintaining some level of, of client data, 
Most likely that's going to be de-identified data if that is some type of protected data um, so that we're not just capturing all type of protected data when we don't have necessary uh, reasoning to access that information, right? So we're talking usually about de-identified data uh, for performance and dashboard uh, reasons that the vendor wants to maintain that, that information for the application. So just understand that in these scenarios, the client is really the one that is maintaining ownership of that data. And something to think about is always in the event of a breach, what's gonna happen, right? If you get audited because your organization gets breached, they're gonna start looking at a chain of custody, right? And in that chain of custody, in this scenario, you would have to identify, you know, where does the vendor actually take chain of custody, right? If there's a breach of this environment, and this client data gets breached and it's you know thousands and thousands of records now there's going to be an audit you know where does this relationship lie what type of agreements are in place what type of security due diligence is going to be done on that who maintains that data where is it backed up how is it restored all of those type of things to maintain business depending on how bad the breach is and how much it affected your daily operations so again, there's a number of components to think about when you're looking at this type of relationship for any clients uh, that you may have. But you know, I wanted to, to just step in and make a quick video to discuss this. If you have any comments, uh, points that you want to add uh, that would be helpful for the community, make sure you leave those in the comments below. Other than that, thank you, have a great day. See your cybersecurity resource, check it out.